my name is Una Menges and I'm a cinematographer based in London. Um, also have American and Canadian bases as well, but London's where the work mainly comes from. I just uh, shot a film in lockdown with Andrew Legg in, in um, Ireland and it's set in the uh, 40s and one of the, the main characters is a filmmaker. So we, we wanted the uh, footage to look like she had shot it. So already your black and white uh, uh, handheld, you know, or, uh, is the period piece, so got to find that equipment. Um, uh, and, and then you, uh, when you're working with a director and they're talking about what's, what's what the emotions that they want to invoke or, or you know, they'll all be, always be very, um, uh, have very strong feelings about certain things that you then translate into, obviously we all see things differently, so then inadvertently you probably put your own slant on those things, how you interpret what they're wanting, right? Uh, I just was also in um, South Africa with a director that I love and um, uh, this was a, a, a BIPOC, uh, a gay film so there was a big influence there of wanting it to look high class and beautiful because lots of these films don't get budget don't get the funding so it was about blowing them out of the water and showing them showing them <laughs> Hollywood that it can be done and that there can be a high quality film once again uh, cancelling out uh, handheld, uh, uh, wanting really elegant high class lenses, not trying to be clever with the um, with stylizing things but just just having a really high quality elegant piece. All last year I was working on a children's television series which was live action animation and CGI and all of this other stuff and we were shooting in Watford outside London which is in winter, well it was winter for a lot of the year, <laughs> with thick fog uh, but we were making this imaginary world where uh, a kind of a feel good where kind of children could kind of come into this place where animals speak to you and stuff. So it was all kind of rim light, super warm. It looked like it was um, um, four, three in the afternoon in the summer or in the fall uh, for the entire shoot. So um, so that's, that's how, how easy it is at the beginning. You read the script, you have images um, in your head and then hopefully when you're going into the interview or to speak with the director, even before you've got the job, what you, what, what's firing you up about the job is the same thing that's firing up the director. So that I'm prepping on a job at the moment and um, you could feel the director when she was interviewing me with relief because we were everything I was saying was what she wanted. So I was obviously what she was looking for in a DP. And so then we're working together. We know we're working on the same path. There are things that I know that I like that that um, without even being conscious of it, I I reach towards and I start to see it in the, the continuity of that in in different things I shoot, even if they're different, um, completely different styles. I uh, can see me in it. I think it's, it's the same as like when you paint, uh, I paint um, and I have lots of mates that paint and um, uh, it's just amazing how, how we could all paint the same thing and it's completely different. One's very pastel and almost two-dimensional and you know, mine, mine are always really dramatic and overkill kind of. So I'm trying to tone all that down in my lighting. Um, so I think um, um, high contrast, uh, slightly colder, usually um, uh, kind of, uh, I want to steady and sure, classic. I'm, a, I'm a quite old school, I think, uh, having been an assistant for so long. Um, and I think that shows through. I don't, I don't want to be fancy with my lenses. I want, I want a kind of a quiet presence and an elegance and organic look to it, um, but not necessarily for those lenses or anything to draw attention to themselves. Um, in the case of the period, the 40s piece, we, we had lenses that were kind of, the elements were wiggling around in them, so, but hopefully, because it was the right lens for the job, it wasn't, wouldn't have drawn attention to itself. What would have drawn attention would have been if it had been a modern lens. For instance, the job I'm, on, I'm, I'm about to do, uh, I know we need to move quickly and we're going to be in, in certain rigs that it, it'll be a pain in the ass to, excuse me, uh, problem to uh, have to change the lens all the time so we're going to go with the short optimo zooms uh, the ingenue zooms because 
that's going to help us with speed and, and um, flexibility. We used to have some Mark II, one, three Zeiss super speeds, and they, they were a go-to for um, the speed. Years ago, those used to feel quite hard to me, but obviously my eyes adjusted and all of our eyes have adjusted and now they feel really gentle. But they're still sharp, but they still feel gentle. And um, I'll go to, um, I mean, Master Primes um, for, would be my equivalent of a modern lens just because of the getting rid of that breathing and, and stuff. But uh, S4s are, are also a go-to for mine. Um, I always use those, and I was talking to someone last night who was talking about the S9s or the S8s, and I was like, oops, because I'm still on the S4s. So I guess it's, it's to do with being in a place where you know what you're going to get, you know what that lens is going to deliver, you know what, what how liquid the blacks are, if, if that makes sense. And so I think with all the choice that we have, uh, I think I prefer to just be somewhere where I know what they're going to give me. If that makes sense, unless the story is calling for something different. I just want high quality results. I started uh, loading when I was still a teenager. Um, I had an American passport, so I, I buggered off to LA and became a clapper loader. And then you just get drawn into this whole wide world and it's addictive, right? The danger of, of working up through the ranks is each position requires so much of you and so much focus that you can get distracted. So you could go to film school, come out in two years and just be a DP and not not work your way up the ranks um, and probably get to it a lot faster. <laughs> um, but the wonderful thing is is that just as you're you're at the point where you know your job and you're you could be kind of getting a bit bored of it, you know, then you then you move up to the next level. The challenge and the pleasure in, in achieving in the shooting of uh, a film is, is um, so rewarding and each project's completely different. I mean, we're so lucky, aren't we? We're spoiled, rotten, to, to be able to delve into these different worlds and have all these toys to play with. <laughs>